As you can see, I am just a man, a middle-income father of two, who loves premium action figures. People often ask me, what does a man of my refined taste drive for an automobile? I tell them, only a vehicle with features so enfeebled and curves that remind you of an antiquated Portuguese prostitute, a dilapidated old nag with 195,000 miles on it and a Kelly Blue Book value of about $800 suits my needs. Honestly, I have no idea how this piece of shit is still on the road. On the plus side, at least it has enough cargo room to haul all my children's ridiculous crap in it. I mean seriously, look at this beleaguered worn down interior. Oh nasty, I think if you look right there you can still see where the damn dog threw up. <laughs> welcome back to the Plastic Planet, a great big Saturday night welcome to you. I am your host, Nick Knack, chilling with you, and I hope you really enjoyed that little love letter just now uh, in the intro there to the late, great Ricardo Montalban, as seen right here uh, from the 1967 episode of Star Trek The Original Series entitled The Space Seed. Um, of course, he played Khan, Nooney, and Sin in that episode which of course more famously probably to most people he later reprised in oops star trek to the wrath of khan so that was my little love letter to him um as you probably may or may not know he did a lot of uh, uh chevrolet or chrysler commercials from 19 the late 1970s into the 1980s and of course that particular um that particular opening there was uh was was, was very much an homage to his uh his 1975 uh, Cordova commercial, which can be uh, famous, which was famous for the Corinthian leather and and whatnot, and you can you can look that up on YouTube if you want. It's 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 pretty awesome. So anyway, rest in peace, sir. That is of course for the late great Ricardo Montalban. All right, well, hey, I hope this. Uh, by the way, before we get started, I hope this video is a lot better than my last video, which also of course was my first video. Um, I was attempting to use uh, some of the. Uh, my computer monitor uh, webcam which really didn't work out real well the video quality was pretty 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 piss poor so hopefully this is a little bit better um i think the audio on this camera may not be great it sounds a little muffled hope it's okay uh we're just going to keep plugging along and, and keep trying to improve these as we go um so anyway glad you're here though and uh, we've got a great little show for you tonight i'm going to be showing you uh, my vintage uh, star wars collection um, in addition to some Transformers and, of course, um, my Star Trek collection, which was why we did the little homage tonight to Ricardo Montalban. So, anyway, glad you're here, and uh, let's get going. Let's let's explore the Plastic Planet in part two of uh, my collection tour. All right, so what really cannot be understated with vintage Star Wars collectibles is that these are the figures for most of us at least most of us in our 30s and 40s, that really started it all. And so these have more special um, attachments to them than almost anything in my collection. Now what you're looking at right here, that Han Solo was from my childhood, that Luke Skywalker is actually from the 1995 reissue of from Power of the Force, but it's, I picked it up and I just had to get it just because it's so you know it's so awesome to have like a brand new well that's 20 years 22 years old but a pseudo brand new um original luke skywalker now the princess leia i pieced together with on ebay the figure i bought separately and i'm going to say something and this might offend some collectors but here it is i use repo parts and i'm damn proud of it because here's the thing with repo parts 
And I know people get upset about this because allegedly it destroys the value of, of, of the figures and it's hard to tell when you're buying a figure whether you're buying original pieces and whatnot. And I guess I can understand that argument to a degree. But here's what I can also say. Is that I love these figures very, very much and I will never probably ever sell them. So that said, it's just nice to be able to affordably kind of, you know, um, re recondition them for display value, at least for me. And let me tell you, the vinyl on these repo uh, capes is actually far better than the vinyl on the originals. It's crisp, it fits nice, it looks nice. So I don't, I don't know. And you know, I might might make some people's shit list, but yeah, once again, I have no problem with repo parts. I mean, again, if you were restoring a 57 Chevy, and would you really be able to buy all original parts for it? Probably not. So let's just leave it at that. So anyway, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour here. This is my vintage collection. I'm going to pan back. And this is only a part of it, at least the part that I have displayed. I have more that are in cases, but this is what I have displayed, which of course I found this um, these little yellow shelves at, 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 at one of a, at a uh, Ark or a Goodwill or a Salvation Army or something. And I painted it this great yellow, which really makes it look like the old... Uh, the old like 92 backs on the on the old vintage figure so I just think it looks fantastic so I'll just kinda give you a little bit of a, a roundabout of them all there of course is the original C-3PO R2-D2 and the X-Wing Luke I just talked about these figures there is Chewbacca and the um, I guess that could be Admiral Piet or I guess it's the Imperial Officer is what he's called Obi-Wan Kenobi with a repo cape and saber but looks really good Going down here, Power Droid and R5-D4, two figures I also picked up on eBay. There is my childhood Vader with a repo cape, looking awesome, along with the uh, the uh, Death Star Commander and the uh, Stormtrooper. Also Hammerhead and Death Star Droid and the old Sand Person there with a repo gaffy stick. And down below here is my vintage Luke, which is loose and flimsy, and he I'm surprised I can get him to stand up, but he looks great with those repo weapons, let me tell you. And Yoda, and of course R2-D2 with sensor scope. Uh, my Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight from when I was a kid with his cloak. And I'll just stop saying it, you get the point. And of course my uh, R2-D2 with pop-up lightsaber from the uh, Power of the Force line. I love that figure, that's from my childhood as well. Uh, the Cantina Aliens, um, Bespin, Han, and 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 uh, and Leia, and the uh, the removable limb C-3PO. And there's some more Empire Strikes Back figures, FX7, um, uh, the uh, medical droid, and I cannot remember his name right now, Ugnot, and of course Lando, Lobot, and Bespin security guard. So anyway, that's sort of a little bit of my vintage collection. Here is my original loot from when I was a kid in his land speeder on the um, the uh, Land of the Jawas playset, which I picked up on eBay. And I was just so amazed when I picked this up because, I mean, the backing to that, of course, is completely cardboard. And it was in pristine condition. I was really impressed with it. So that was a really cool find. And, of course, it came with the... Um, it came with the escape pod. And back here is my original... R2-D2 with sensor scope, missing all his limbs, missing his stickers, I think he went through the bathtub, the mud, everything else. I just found him and I had to put him in my collection because that figure was so loved. So he's just going to go right there. So, oh, and there's my, also my Obi-Wan from when I was a kid and my EV-99 which I think is pretty rare and my Amana Man. So those guys are kind of under glass, so to speak, but looking really nice there. And of course going up here is a dewback I picked up recently on eBay with my Stormtrooper from when I was a kid. And so, yeah, just, I mean, just really cool. I mean, this is what started it all. This is, uh, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It really is, these vintage collectibles. Um, you know, even if you have to go a little modern to restore them, um, I think it's cool. So... I'm going to pan back a little more, let you take it in. So, I have more. They're in boxes. Maybe I'll show you guys that at another time, but looking really nice. Hey, kids. It's time for an activity. All right. So, while we're talking about vintage Star Wars figures, or vintage toys in general, 
This right here, as I showed earlier, is my X-Wing pilot Luke. Now this is from my childhood. However, this is the second one of this figure that I own, that I owned, I should say. The first one I had, I was playing in a construction site with when I was about nine, maybe eight years old. And I was playing on a dirt mound with him. And you know what, I turned my back and was playing with another figure and I turned around and he was gone. I mean, like, like a fart in the wind, he was gone. And I must have spent two hours, two hours, on top of that dirt mound digging for him. And I never, ever found him. To this day, he is probably, my original X-Wing Fighter Luke uh, figure, is probably in someone's house's foundation. Buried in concrete and will someday be dug up like a dinosaur fossil. So anyway, that's my story about that. Now, let's play a little fun game if you want. Go ahead and comment in the comment section down below and tell me your regrettable vintage figure loss from when you were a kid. Could be anything. Could be Star Wars. Could be your Battlestar Galactica. Could be your Transformers. Anything. Figure that you regrettably lost and how you lost it. All right, go ahead. It's going to be awesome. All right, so it's now Sunday evening. Um, I actually was recording last night and kind of felt myself getting a little tired, so I, I said, well, you know, I turned in for the evening. But I'm gonna, now I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to change gears a little bit. I've shown you guys, in the previous video, I showed you guys uh, both my Sideshow and Hot Toys premium so, uh, Star Wars collections. Um, earlier in this video, I showed you my vintage Star Wars collection. Now I'm going to change gears a little bit. We're going to talk a little bots and a little Star Trek, so I'm going to show you guys um, those two collections. And uh, so, yeah, let's check it out. Alrighty, so here is my Transformers wall, which is on the back side of my, my uh, the uh, plastic planet. I'm going to try to step back a little bit, let you guys see it. You guys see my computer over there. Um, and you can see, uh, you know, the, the whole wall here is mostly um, Transformers. There's my DCs in the corner there. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that another time. But, uh, so, anyway, I'm going to start, I'm going to start over on this side and just kind of work my way around. And uh, these are a lot of these are vintage from my childhood. However, there are some reissues in here, and I actually do have considerably more Transformers in boxes in the basement. But these are my all-time favorites that I got up. Um, so here is obviously Ultra Magnus, uh, Rodimus Prime, and Galvatron. Uh, those are all. I think those are all. No, this is actually a reissue because his tires are rubber. So the Rodimus Prime's a reissue, but Ultra Magnus and Galvatron were vintage from my childhood. And uh, I was a little late getting into the game in Transformers. I, I, I kind of clung to Star Wars as long as I could. But it wasn't until 86 when I went and saw the movie that my hair was just completely blown back. And I was sold on Transformers from that point forward. Um, so I, I kind of have more, honestly, more of an attachment towards the movie characters. The movie characters is in the 1986 movie characters than I did the uh, ones that preceded that the, uh, as far as the 84 line goes. So... Keep that in mind as we go along. But anyway, there's 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 probably some uh, some G1 right there as we move up. Um, those Insecticons, I think all of those I had I had Shrapnel and I had Bombshells as a kid. But I think all those are ones that I bought um, as an adult. I think they're they're all vintage, but I think I bought them all as an adult because my Bombshell, which I think I still have my original Bombshell, is he's pretty beat up. My Shrapnel is pretty beat up. Uh, Megatron right there, he is a uh, Takara reissue. I got him back, oh, about 12 years ago now. So a lot of these I've had for a long time. Uh, the Devastator in the back there was mine when I was a kid. Um, I think I, I did a custom on his eyes. I don't think you can see. It's pretty dark back there. But um, but his eyes are, his I painted his eyes red. I thought that was kind of cool. And the sound wave right there, if you can see him, um, is, uh, he is also, uh, he's also a Takara reissue. All right, so kind of working my way up the shelf here, and I actually had to pause the machine and go get a ladder and kind of reset my light. Uh, my lighting down here in my on the plastic planet is absolutely terrible for recording. Great for collector collectibles, great for ambiance, but terrible for recording. So I've been trying to work with the lighting issue um, as I as I work through these videos, and I hope it gets better. So hopefully this looks okay. Uh, one thing to point out with Transformers, I definitely do not buy them with as much ferocity as I buy other uh, lines such as Star Wars. So I only maybe add a major Transformer piece, maybe one or two a year. And this year I did add this third party Megatron, which is not, he actually isn't called Megatron. I have no idea what he's called. The box is downstairs. But I did add him recently as someone sold him off as the new Takara Masterpiece Megatron uh, became available. I think people were starting to sell this guy off pretty cheap. 
So I actually got a pretty good buy on him. I really do dig him. I mean, I think the Takara one's better, but this this third party one is pretty badass. And I've never even tried to attempt to transform. Well, I don't try to transform any of my masterpieces because I'm just afraid I'll break the damn things. And honestly, I I just don't have the patience for it. So um, so that being said, there he is. And the sound wave right there, that's a, also Takara um, sound wave from a few years ago, masterpiece. In addition to, um, I think that's Frenzy, Laser Beak, and uh, ooh, Ravage fell over. But there he is. So we'll move over here. There is my vintage Trypticon with some of these awesome, uh, I forget what company made these. I think it was Hasbro, but they're the Heroes of Cybertron line they had a number of years ago, and they sold them in uh, Rite Aid and Walgreens for like three bucks. Fun line to collect. I bought a lot of those. I don't have them all out, but I really did dig buying those uh, Heroes of Cybertron. So there are those along with my, my, like I said, my G1 vintage Trypticon, which is I've had for, you know, 30 years now. And I'll run down the shelf here. There's a gentle giant Starscream back there. He's kind of in the dark. I uh, picked up Optimus. This is the this is the new Toys R Us exclusive, I think. Um, uh, Hasbro Masterpiece Optimus Prime that came out this year. I don't know what MP whatever. I know it's like MP10 or MP11 or whatever. I don't know what that is, but I don't know which one he is. But he has the trailer behind him. You can see, and there's Roller. With uh, with Spike behind the wheel, I can't quite get in there, and his gun. So anyway, I picked him up. He's absolutely awesome. I love having uh, a um, Optimus Prime in the same scale as that as that masterpiece uh, Megatron, or that I should say that bootleg or third party Megatron. Um, in addition to my Toys R Us Rodimus Prime from a few years back, and there is actually my G1 um, Rodimus Prime back in the corner there. That actually is from my childhood. Uh, there's a Quintesson I picked up online from a uh, foreign seller. I, I don't know if he's official. I don't think he is, but he's awesome. And there is a third-party Galvatron, which, of course, did not come with that Decepticon sticker. I put that on myself, but he is awesome. You actually do see him a little better close up in the uh, intro to the show. Uh, same figure. So moving down the shelf, my, my Decepticon Seekers, my Jets, Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp with their G1 reissue counterparts in uh, jet mode. So very cool. And then I bought this guy last year. I couldn't resist. Had to have a Fortress Maximus when he came out. And I got, I got to scoot back just to get his big tall ass in the entire shot. Just an amazing figure. Um, he's like 24 inches tall. He's huge. Um, funny story about Fortress Maximus, um, about 1987 when the original came out, and I was in the sixth grade, and I did want him for my birthday, and I did put an ask in for him, and my parents kind of, kind of balked at it, and they, they sat me down and said, you know, you know, you know, they're knickknack, um, little knickknack. We would love to get you this if you were a few years younger, but we feel that you're kind of getting to a point where you're not going to want to own action figures anymore. So, you know, why don't you think of something else for your birthday, and and you know, we, we'll get you that. And so, of course, being a nice kid, I, I agreed. But I always really wanted that Fortress Maximus. And it turns out I still collect action figures, so, uh, you know, I probably should have pushed the issue. But anyway, when this guy came out, I had to get him because I never had a Fortress Maximus. So this was a must. So he's very awesome. There's some Heroes of Cybertron right down there, too. And down below him, if you can see, um, those are the original Masterpiece. Uh, my Optimus Prime's leaning kind of bad there. Uh, Megatron and Optimus Prime, those are the big, uh, tall... Uh, 12 inch uh, masterpieces that are kind of came out several years ago they're out of scale with the with the line now still great figures though with the little crim zeke down there with them so pretty cool and moving up picked this guy up last year as well and this is the uh the devastator that came out and i don't know was he a target exclusive but he came out last year um what, what line was that uh Titans Return line, maybe I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm sure I'm botching it. Um, I don't I don't collect a lot of retail retail figures anymore. But I did get him because he is just amazingly awesome. And I actually, getting back to transforming, I actually had to my, have my son, my 11 uh, year old son at the time, put him together for me because I just didn't have the patience for it. And he's pretty awesome at that stuff. So, also shout out to him too. He actually did all the filming work for our intro to, uh, today as well. So, big, big shout out to him. He was a big help in me getting that filmed today. 
all the black and white footage we shot. So, great kid. So, that is that. Moving up the shelf, um, not much up here. Just a gentle giant. There is my. If you can see him up there, boy, he's kind of he's kind of dark. Uh, my uh, Shockwave, my G1 Shockwave, and my uh, Hasbro reissue Optimus Prime with the child-friendly short stacks. Yeah, that sucks. But he's cool. He's cool. Uh, here's a third th uh, third-party bootleg Predaking up there. He's was not an official Transformer. Bought him from a foreign seller. It was completely sketchy. Took me like three months to get him. Thought I'd gotten screwed. Uh, but eventually he came. And he's really cool. He, he's really hard to pose. Really hard to keep up, standing up. He's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, his parts fall off all the time. But, uh, you know, he looks impressive. So that's cool. I always wanted a full, full on Predaking too. So especially a masterpiece level, uh, masterpiece scale one. I can't even tell you what kind, what he is. I, I have no idea. It's one of those ones you ordered offline. He came all these weird, sketchy bags and came direct from uh, somewhere in China. I don't know. He got, you know, swept out from the backside of a sweatshop or something. Something horrible, I'm sure, that I was supporting. But awesome figure. Yeah, moving back down the shelf to conclude our Transformers tour. There's Grimlock from Toys R Us, and there is a, I believe, Takara Hot Rod and the Gentle Giant Buster behind him. But it's pitch black, so I'm not even gonna try to get in there. So that is Transformers, and we're going to conclude today with a little Star Trek, just to wrap things up. So I'm going to kind of get up there if I can. The glare is terrible. I apologize. There is my Art Asylum ships, the Enterprise B, the Enterprise D, and the Enterprise E, along with the old Galoob, I think, uh, Next Generation cast up there. So I found all those guys at a comic book store on card for five bucks just a few years ago. And I just said, screw it, I opened them. Maybe that was sacrilegious, but it was it was awesome just to break them open, to have all that air that was, you know, sealed in there from 1987 just come out. It was like sniffing the 80s. It was awesome. Just awesome. So, more of a fan of the original series myself. So, there's a lot of Art Asylum down here. Some Johnny Lightning. A little bit of Playmates. Just an assortment of things. There's the Art Asylum original Enterprise. There's Kirk and Klingons and all kinds of stuff. Spock and the Horta from Devil in the Dark. Great episode. There's a collectible plate I bought online. I thought it was a much bigger plate, but it was a tiny plate. Sort of disappointed when I got that. Uh, there's some VHS's back there if you can see them. There's the Corbinite Maneuver back there. Um, the Tholian Web is back there as well, the VHS for it. I don't know if you can see it. That's another great episode. When Kirk got caught between two realities on the on board of the USS Defiant. Which they, I thought they really did a good job bringing that back and uh, bringing that whole plot line back around in uh, Enterprise on the final season of Enterprise when they uh, did their... Uh, they're a dark universe uh, version of, uh, you know, the, the alternate universe, you know, where Spock has his goatee, you know, when Enterprise did that version and they found the Defiant, that was pretty awesome. So, that's a cool watch if you ever are so inclined. Uh, so, here's some more Star Trek, more Art Asylum, another Enterprise. I, I bought the HD version and the regular version. Um, boy, I really like this setup back here, if you can see it. Glare kind of sucks, but there's Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. Um, I was really, really tempted to get the new versions of these that came up by Quantum whatever um, that did those really nice 12 inch 1 6 scale figures um, but my priorities are kind of more towards Star Wars so I, I balked at those but because I still have these guys too and, and while they're smaller and not as cool they're still great figures so I have those there's a lunch pail over here and there's Spock and there's Kirk from uh, um, a muck time I think and uh, there's there's a Klingon. I forget which episode that's from. The the Gorn right there from the episode Arena. That's a great episode. That's actually a Playmates figure, but he looks great for a Playmates figure. He looks fantastic. And there is uh, <coughs> Orion Slave Girl, which is actually from the episode The Cage. Um, common fact: I don't think there there was only one appearance of an Orion Slave Girl in the series. In the original series, and Kirk never ever hooked up with her. That's, that's kind of a common misconception that Kirk was hooking up with green chicks. Not true. Not true. Not not that J.J. Abrams didn't think so, because, well, anyway. 
I digress. So moving back down along the shelf here, got a uh, got a widescreen laser disc of Star Trek the Motion Picture back there. My wife, my great great wife, who we will know and be known as a as a Disney girly girl, picked that up for me um, at a thrift stop, a thrift store, excuse me, thrift store. But it's a great little find. Not that we have a laser disc player in the house, never will be able to watch it. But I framed it up and it looks fantastic. And uh, honestly, a highly underrated movie if you actually like Star Trek and appreciate Star Trek for what it is, which is it's not Star Wars, it's different. Star Trek The Motion Picture is actually a great film. So, that being said, uh, Wrath of Khan, Kirk and Spock there, um, the 1701 Enterprise from the films, and 1701 Alpha from the films right there from Star Trek 4, 5, and 6. Um, some smaller Star Trek ships. Um, Art Asylum Kirk from Wrath of Khan, complete with blood stain from uh, Incident Peter Preston when he died. The word is given. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, moving down the shelf here, got some more stuff. There's a uh, Playmates uh, Bird of Prey. There's a USS Defiant model I put together. I'm not. I haven't done a lot of models. I did models when I was a kid and loved doing them, but as I've gotten older, I just don't have the patience for them. The only thing I create is stress because I just swear and they never come out right. But that model came out okay. So a little USS Defiant and I kind of rigged it up so it would sit on a doll stand. Because for whatever reason models don't come with stands anymore which boggles my mind. Um, there's an old Gorn back there in the corner. And then down below that my Star Trek original series on DVD all three seasons. Um, the original NX-01 Enterprise and in its dirty little place where it belongs the Kelvin Universe Star Trek um, Enterprise down collecting dust so that is my Star Trek collection back up a little bit yeah I'll step back let you see the whole thing it's just one shelf I don't put a lot of calories into it but it's just one shelf not that it's not a great shelf but yeah there you go Alrighty, so that's going to conclude this week's episode from the Plastic Planet. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tour, this second tour, part two. Next week, next week we're going to do part three. And in part three, we're going to be going downstairs. Downstairs into the archive room where I have a lot of my older collectibles, um, a lot of more um, uh, retail type items from the late 90s and 2000s. So stay tuned for that next week, coming up next week. And I'm sure we have a lot more fun on the way as well. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great week and uh, adios from the Plastic Planet.